being here. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, this is the world premiere of this film and our, only our third screening, and we're just so absolutely thrilled to present the film at Sundance and to bring it to all of you. Um, I guess now is the time for questions. Uh, yeah, me? Oh, I, um, so I understand that the major unions aren't joint, aren't helping, and I'm wondering if you have an insight into why you aren't able to get um, support from. It's yeah. Well, um, Amazon's been around for 29 years. If they wanted to organize Amazon, they had ample time before this movie was made. Right. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Uh, they weren't successful, um, and we had to go independent because ain't no union giving out weed. <laughs> the way we organized is not traditional, and um, you've seen it. And I think that that's um, the style of organizing that they're not accustomed to. Mm -hmm. So it's really about um, supporting the workers on the ground. They have to do more of that. There's nothing wrong with holding them accountable. Next question. Also, thank you so much for coming out. Mm. Um, so there was a note in the film that Amazon has yet to start negotiating contract with the workers. Um, what's, what can you say about the timeline for that? Are you all worried that this will be used to say the union hasn't delivered? On what you want to deliver, you have not to do that to negotiate. So where is that? Yeah, well, um, what we did was historical. They could never take that away from us. Um, we already won. The problem is the laws in this country are weak. Mm -hmm. They haven't been changed since the 1930s. We're in 2024. So the process of getting the contract is uh, is flawed. So it's not really up to us. It's up to these politicians who we need to hold accountable. So that's where we need to start with the root cause of why it's so difficult to organize and why it takes so long to get a contract. That's mm -hmm. not a question for us, a question for our president. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> other labor leaders are not speaking up about that. Mm -hmm. So for us, we got to just continue to organize. That one in the back. So here in Utah, right to work state, one of the least unionized states in the country, you have a pretty like a group of people here. What can we do to help support the working class in general? And, and maybe you can just start by introducing yourself and saying more about what you do here. Uh, yeah, so I'm Katie Hogue. I uh, am the organizer for Ask Me Local 1004. Um, that is... <laughs> It is a huge honor to be here. Um, these guys just did such an amazing job on this film, mm -hmm. uh, portraying what we go through on a daily basis to protect workers. Um, to your question of what you can do to help uh, support workers locally, there's a lot of things that you can do, um, especially since we're in session right now. Um, there is a horrible bill that is coming right now that is going into Rules Committee on Friday and it's House Bill 285. What they're trying to do is make it so that it's illegal for public employees to have a union, pretty much. They're making it so that it's illegal to deduct union dues. It will be illegal to hold any union business on public property, which I'm pretty sure all the union members and you guys all pay for. Um, we would not be able to go and our stewards would not be able to hold business, which means that we cannot go in and defend our union members. Our contract would be taken away from us. It is a very disastrous bill and it's something we really need help with and we need the public's assistance. There are petitions you can sign contacting your local house representatives and letting them know that you are against this bill would be extremely helpful for us. Um, we are um, probably gonna be holding a rally soon. Any support showing up to those would be helpful. Um, coming up to the house when it's in the meetings and being present and um, speaking on behalf of the unions is helpful. 
Um, and then if you are an Amazon worker or any other worker that is um, sick and tired of getting treated like crap, like all we want to do is put food on our tables and a roof over our head. You know, we're not asking for much here. If this is any of you guys, we have lots of local unions here in all different categories of work and we can find the correct people to get you to to be able to start a union in your own local um, employments. Thank you, Katie. Here's a few ways for information to connect with you online or on social media. Um, yeah, so it's just, if you look up AFSCME, A-F-S-C-M-E, um, 1004 on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you will find contact information there. Um, also, a good contact to be um, to is the Utah AFL CIO. Um, they are in contact with all the other local unions as well. Thank you so much. Stay. There may be more questions that you are best suited to answer locally. Um, yeah, it's House Bill 285. Should we all take our phones out and follow <laughs> on social right now? Let's do it. There's a question right in the back. Yep. Uh, in making the film, you didn't shy away from the tensions within the union, and I'm just kind of curious, uh, as a filmmaker, as you get sucked into the cause, I'm guessing a little bit, that was probably hard to film and then show, and then Chris, uh, Well, when you organize the people, it doesn't matter what organization you're with, there's always going to be internal fights. Mm -hmm. Ours is just publicized. <laughs> you know, there's no difference in any other union in this country. They go on through the same thing we're going through, they just don't have cameras following them. And um, um, we got realized, we're coming from different backgrounds, everybody in this room not going to agree with each other, but um, that's organizing, that's democracy. Um, the only thing that we can do is organize, you know. Piggybacking off of uh, uh, the question, the last question as well. Um, organize your workplace, no matter what industry you're in. You don't have to go to an established union. Like you've seen here, create one. It's a challenge. I'm challenging everybody in the room. Create your own union, something that benefits your workplace and represent your workers. I'll just answer that question as well. You know, from the standpoint of, of us as directors, I mean, from the very beginning, we understood this film is fundamentally about um, real people learning how to become organizers in real time and, and um, not just, you know, uh, a, an antagonistic struggle against um, between workers and a huge corporation, but also a portrait of people trying to do something collectively in, at a moment in history in which we're not really taught a lot about how to how to do things collectively, how to have collective power at a time of, of um, low union density all over the country, all over the world. And that meant for us that it was important not to shy away from what's hard about that, not to only, you know, pour, to, to paint a picture of this struggle as if it's an easy thing to start a union. It's not easy. People are tired, people are coming off shift, they were at the tent all night. There's a lot of differences that exist between people and it felt very important to us to be honest about that precisely because it, it um, it's, I think anyways, is more inspiring to see real people <laughs> with real lives do something that feels often very, very impossible, and then persevere and continue doing the work. Um, what is the role of um, labor organizing in the struggle for a free Palestine? <laughs> free Palestine. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm in the movement. <laughs> um, well, labor needs to do more. In this country, uh, especially, uh, we took our stance already, and um, labor is very important to that movement. Uh, Palestinians are working class people, and um, if labor leaders in this country take a stance, uh, it would be very powerful, um, correlating to politics. So, for us, we gotta just take our stance and hold people follow. 
Yeah, I'll just add to that, you know, there's a long history of organized labor being at the forefront of international solidarity struggle. And, um, you know, expressing the idea that these struggles are interconnected, that um, imperialism, that that militarization, that war is um, wrapped up in, you know, the exploitation of workers. Um, and I, it's, I'm really glad you brought up Palestine. I think this is a, something a lot of us are thinking about at this moment where we're reading the news and thinking about what we can do locally, but how we can also be thinking internationally about solidarity. Yeah, you know, much, um, there's much talk about self-determination and we, it, sometimes it seems like an easy word to, to deploy, but it could not be more true that um, people in so many different groups are fighting to survive for basic dignity, for basic humanity, a, a, a right to define their future and their survival. And I think when we look at this movement, it is, and if you really meditate on what they have been going through that, I mean, this is, this is a fight on behalf of all of our lives, right? Everybody, and um, I think to support this idea that um, the systems of oppression are affecting all of us, um, Palestinians, workers, um, this is where people's movements really are activated to make that linkage. So, thank you so much for that question. In the, in the back? Yeah. yeah. Good question. Uh, how did you get involved in Meet Chris and? Um, so, uh, at the height of the pandemic, as we know, Chris let a walk out uh, due to safety and health protocols, um, or the lack of, and um, soon after that, our producers, um, Mars Verone and Samantha Curley, reached out and asked Chris about the idea of possibly doing something that might start documenting the work they were doing to draw attention to the working conditions there. Um, they. Uh, soon after, reached out to Brett. Um, Brett had done uh, a wonderful short called Camper Force about Amazon, and um, they continued um, developing that. Um, Brett and I uh, have always um, admired each other's work over the years, and so Brett reached out to me. Soon a team was formed, and we just started spending time with the guys on the ground um, as they you know, set out on this campaign. And, and folks might remember, um that there was a, a, a very high profile um, unionization effort in Alabama, in Bessemer, Alabama, that got a lot of attention, a lot of institutional support, political support. All eyes were on that struggle in a sort of, you know, everyone understood and still understands that as the second largest employer in the nation, you know, unionizing Amazon is the future of organized labor. Um, and that, um, that uh, union effort unfortunately resulted in a defeat and it was in the wake of that, you know, Chris and folks had gone down to see what was happening on the ground, lent their support, and in the wake of that loss decided they were gonna start a campaign and, and start a campaign differently. We thought that was very exciting to, to um, bear witness to and try and document. One interesting side note, I, I had spent many years documenting whistleblower, minority whistleblower cops in uh, the NYPD and the issues that they had been experiencing, um, fear of retali retaliation, a culture of fear, um, uh, lots of um, pressure on the job to meet productivity rates, um, was the same exact issues that the workers in, at Amazon were experiencing. And so it was, for me, just such a shocking realization that um, this is not just a law enforcement problem, that um, you know all of our labor industries are affected by this kind of corporate business model. There's a question right there. Yeah, it was all, it's like the start of another uh, organization in California. How many others across the country, you saw another one in New York, how many others across the country? Uh, currently, I think we have about four or five running campaigns and um, now we're we're more we're expanding internationally, so I've been all over the world now. Uh, blessed to be, you know, um, spreading the message of the Amazon Labor Union, and uh, now we're going to hopefully organize in other countries to become an international union 
and continue spreading the word of unionizing all across the world for Amazon workers. Mm. I see a, uh, a hand there, and then I also see a hand there, so maybe there and then there. They had two separate questions. The first one was, you know, I guess to Chris and to the filmmakers really, but Chris, like, what gave you the ability to have the strength and vision to build to build and build and build from the place of like, you know, just the, the, the knowledge that you deserved more, but that you could actually build this. And how did you have that perseverance? Secondly, are the other major labor unions in this country supporting you or thwarting you? It was really hard to tell like what was happening there and, and what's happening now with that. So two separate questions. No, we're independent, and uh, there's a lot of politics when it comes to that. You know, they, they took this victory and made it a competition. Mm, yeah. Instead of supporting the work. You know, two years later, here we are, and we're still in the same situation. Don't make sense. So, um, in the beginning, did I see, if you would ask me if I'd be standing as a union president, I would look at you like you're crazy. But, um, in 2020, when I got fired from Amazon, I lost everything. So I had nothing to do but fight. And I think that's a lot of people in this room. We have nothing to do right now but fight. We're running out of time. So when you leave here, you got to think about what you want to do next. Because in the next few years, one out of every four Americans is going to work for this company. Mm -hmm. So this fight right now is your fight right now. And that's the revolution that we're in and that we started. Unfortunately, it's a slow one. <laughs> I'll just add to that, you know, it, it, it was very exciting to, to make this film and to offer a very intimate portrait of this independent effort and, and then also realize as we were making the film that we're in a moment of a resurgence in labor struggle. I mean, yeah. Starbucks was, you know, uh, starting to unionize at coffee shops at the same time, but, you know, just in the past year, we've seen a huge spike in the number of strikes um, and also... Uh, um, new leadership in a lot of established unions that is very energized and energizing. So even um, even among some of the established unions, we're seeing a kind of resurgence of militancy and action and commitment to bargaining for, um, for, for much better conditions after, you know, almost 40 years of union decline in, in the United States. Yeah, something notable is that when you think about the unionization campaigns that were getting attention, um, mm -hmm. Starbucks, university professors, um, mm -hmm. the legacy unions, Hollywood, um, SAG-AFTRA, um, you have to look at like who are the people yeah. who are getting the media attention, right? And who are the ones who are struggling like in the shadows to build an organizing committee, fight against a trillion dollar company, and during the course of our film, filming largely ignored their organization efforts. Um, it was startling right at the end of 2021. Starbucks was flipping 12 to 15 person coffee shops. So they, yeah, they convinced seven or eight people in the coffee shop to vote for in favor of a union. Meanwhile, these guys were getting no publicity and were setting out to flip an 8,300 person factory, a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we have to think well, what was the makeup of that organizing committee? People of color, right? This is worker led and this is. This is what I, I think when we hear this term, like, you know, in, in, in invisible workforce, um, you know, this is what that means. They're invisible because they know we don't support them. We have not actually acknowledged that, that experience. So I think that that was something as filmmakers, um, when we learned that Chris and, you know, his friends were very open, in fact, to having an opportunity to share their experience, um, you know, it it really dawned on us what a meaningful um, endeavor that might be. Okay, I remember there was a hand over there. Yeah, first thing, Chris, I just want to say, like, huge respect to you. I mean, you're a natural leader, and uh, for you had so much to lose, and yet you fight. I mean, it just absolutely blew me away. And, and congratulations to filmmakers for carrying your message. And then you kind of... Uh, yeah, so, say, um, you actually alluded to it a little bit, Chris, the reality is Amazon is a massive international, mm -hmm. and a lot of the stories and the, and the questions are coming out, and it kind of worries me, this is not a, an American, this is an international force, and workers all around the world, and, and all that Amazon are going to do is move that attention somewhere else, 
and I just hope and pray the filmmakers do a, I think the, the, the documentary was brilliant. I just hope to God you guys are going to follow Chris on his international mission yeah. and, and tell a bigger story if there is even a That's bigger true. one. Mm -hmm. That's a big Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Um, international work is definitely important. Um, you know, uh, right over the border, they have way more progressive laws in Canada. Uh, I just came from Sweden, 90% um, union density. They're, they're, they're shutting down Elon Musk as we speak. So we got to look at what labor is offering in this country, which ain't much. You know, um, these laws need to be changed. We need a labor party. And when you think about labor leaders, we need more labor, labor leaders of color. Mm -hmm. You know, think about that. Yeah, and just to your point, I mean, it's not just that Amazon is a, a global behemoth that employs lots of people around the world, but also it's a, a just, you know, it's predicated on a global supply chain and a just-in-time delivery system, which means, like, actually shutting down the flow of capital, actually making things hard for the company to, to operate requires people working in solidarity across borders. Um, absolutely. Yeah, this is not an Amazon problem, right? This is a capitalism problem, mm -hmm. right? This is a, this is our society's obsession with economic performance and power. I mean, and to your point earlier, I mean, this is why this is absolutely a Palestinian struggle as well. Amazon is like a regular day. That's a national holiday, so that's a regular Saturday at Amazon. You know, we got to think uh, more creative, and uh, boycotting Amazon is not going to do it because they make most of their money off of AWS, military contracts, the computer, the technology, all of that. So we have to damage their PR and expose how workers are being treated. Hopefully this film will do that. They don't like their, their negative press. That's how we get them. Yeah, that's mm. interesting. Okay, I think there's time for one last question. So where does this film go next? Where is it going to make its public debut? What's the website where folks can spread the word? Oh, well, the website is a uh, brand new uh, film that, oh, wait. Is there anything on it? You need, probably not, <laughs> but just go there anyway. <laughs> get the traffic it's busy. Out. Yeah, get the Google results going. Yeah, UnionTheFilm.com, yeah. <laughs> AmazonLaborUnion.org. Um, please donate. We're grassroots. We don't have a contract. We need uh, donations. Mm -hmm. And um, Amazon Labor Union on TikTok, on Instagram. Follow me. Support our efforts and spread the word. Mm -hmm. As for the film, I mean, this is our this is our world launch, um, and um, it, we're going to be on the festival circuit. We're going to have our international premiere very soon, and um, we don't have any news yet about where you can tell your friends and family to watch the film. But hopefully, that will happen soon. We'd love as many people as possible to watch the film to see the film. Um, but we're also going to take it on the road and have a real grassroots campaign, bring it to workers, bring it to workplaces. Um, so. Feel free to contact us if you want to organize a community screening. And, and talk to Katie, because we're going to be working directly with Katie to do some local area screenings with Amazon workers. Mm -hmm. I mean, raise your hand if you know an Amazon worker or has a friend who knows one. Okay. So can all of you talk to Katie? <laughs> um, and, you know, start spreading the word about this film, because we very much want to make sure we bring it to regional communities that um, are really trying to address this kind of issue. <laughs> Yeah, tomorrow will be available online, right? Yeah, tomorrow for those who didn't watch it today in person, they can see it tomorrow online as oh, well. Yeah, for do some dance, do some dance festival app. And we have a, we have a larger team that came with us to Utah that unfortunately left today, but we're so blessed that Rob has um, Rob had three films actually at the festival. It was incredible. <laughs> amazing whole team that is on stage with, with us as well. So but thank you to all of you for coming and um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm just so